Kyura Tato Katoa. Begin with a prayer. Manawa mai te Maori Nuku. Manawa mai te Maori Rangi. Embrace the power of the earth, embrace the power of the sky. Ko te Maori kai o, he Maori tipua. Ka pakaru mai tipo. The power I have is mystical and shatters all darkness. Taumai te Maori, omie huie ta. Come of the light, we are united, progressing forward. Today is Waitangi Day. Sometimes the privilege of living and working in a different cultural context comes our way. Sometimes the different culture is largely similar to what we've been used to. Like it was for me when I lived and worked in a Coswaldian parish in the UK in 2006. The similarities between European church contexts and places like Aotearoa, Australia, Scotland, the United States, England are far greater in number than the dissimilarities. We have more in common than not, though we like to joke about the uncommon. Yet when a minister from a European cultural background lives and works in Samoa or in Te Ao Māori, the Māori world, the dissimilarities are greater than the similarities. So it is when a Samoan or Māori minister, Minita, lives and works in Te Ao Pākehā, the Pākehā world, then the differences between what one assumes and what others not of your culture assume can be very large indeed. And we, the visiting minister, the manuhiri, the bird who alights for a while, need to listen and learn and adapt. In time with patience, by everyone involved, we start to become more conversant in more than one cultural world. We start on the road of being bicultural. Many years ago, I had the privilege of working first in Māngari, in Te Ao Māori, and then in Glen Innes. While the church in Glen Innes was of Te Ao Pākehā, many of the community groups I was invited into weren't. Like taking off your shoes at the door, many of the assumptions I had I had to take off, put aside, in order to hear, understand, and later respond. And I was being watched all the time. Taking off your assumptions, talking of which I read recently uh, a paper called Takawa or Uruera. As you may know, I have over the decades regularly walked a lake track around Waikara Moana. With the settlement between the Crown and Naituhoi, the National Park is now co-managed. What that means is assumptions are being re-examined as a bicultural way of working emerges. In the document I refer to, you won't find any reference to the state of the tracks or the quality of the huts or the ease of access, the things often foremost in Pākehā conversations. Instead, you will read of a vision of caring for the people of the place, the plants and birds, the ecology of the Uruwerus. And the paper is couched in mystical theological language, like this statement. Te Uruwera's ancient and enduring, a fortress of nature alive with history. Te Uruwera is a place of spiritual value with its own mana, status and more power. Te Uruwera has an identity in and of herself. 
what is being talked about is a different worldview. Though with many overlaps, like pest control and concern about poisons with Tao Pakia. When you grow up in Aotearoa with a Samoan or Māori whakapapa heritage, you are immersed in a bicultural world. There is the world of your family and often your church, and then there's the world of the institutions and their common sense, which were designed by Pākehā with Pākehā assumptions and automatically favour those who share such assumptions. So the vast majority of Māori and Pacifica peoples in Aotearoa live biculturally, with a foot in each of these different worlds. So bicultural is not about being bilingual. The language is always helpful, indeed necessary, to understand culture. Being bicultural is about being able to operate in more than one cultural world. It's about learning and understanding the nuances, what that knowing smile might mean, who needs to be consulted before a decision is made, and what is sacred, and how the sacred should be treated. A bicultural church, therefore, is one where both worlds operate, are adequately resourced, and are equally honoured. PZNZ, to which our church at St Luke's belongs, is a monocultural church, where the Pacific Presbytery and Te Aka Puaho are peripheral to our mission and purpose. And the resourcing and who determines the resourcing reflects that. PCNZ and its monoculturalism assumes that only one culture can be in the ascendancy, and that is the culture of the majority. This is not to say there are many fine people within our church who dream and work towards a bigger vision, and should try to express that in words like multiculturalism and biculturalism. But to affect the sort of change I'm talking about, General Assembly would need to give up much of its power and assumptions. A bit like entering into a marriage. And learn to re-examine and renegotiate all that it does and why. And, like a marriage, it's only when we start on a journey of committing ourselves to each other as cultures that we will learn what true aroha is and what such a commitment involves. So if such change ever came about, I would expect the mana and mauri of Te Uruwera. Remember the kaitiakis of Te Uruwera are nai tūhoi, who make up Te Akapuaho. The Te Uruwera, I imagine, would feature in the business and prayers of General Assembly. Part of the journey of embracing two worlds is listening, learning and interacting with another spirituality. I'm not talking about learning a hymn in Samoan or Te Reo, or learning the Lord's Prayer or another prayer in those languages. Although, of course, as I said, language is one of the gateways and is to be encouraged. When I talk about a bicultural spirituality, I'm talking about seeing with two sets of spectacles and then having an inner and sometimes an outer conversation between those two visions. Such conversations are part of what Tara or Waitangi, Waitangi Day is about. It's hard to talk about Pākehā spirituality without making generalisations, to which there are always exceptions. And hard to talk about Māori spirituality when I've simply been a visitor, a guest in its foray. So my words are very provisional. One more proviso. Sometimes it seems that we want to label a spirituality as suspect. We might be wary of some of our Pākehā spiritual heritage, or wary of what's been called Māori polytheism. 
I would simply say there are treasures in both worlds and things to be careful about in both. In Māori spirituality, the starting point is location and the interrelationship between one's whenua with one's whenua, land, one's whakapapa, genealogy, and one's whānau, family. One's mana and māori, your self-confidence and the strength in who you are, derives from those relationships. Personhood is found in the weave of whenua, whakapapa, and whānau. Dislocation leads to dysfunction and spiritual suffering. A rangatira, a leader, is one who literally weaves a ranga, a company of people together, tira. The health or ranga of the whole is what's spiritually important. In Pākehā spirituality, the starting point is also location, but rooted more in the self and the self's relationship with the divine. Whenua, whakapapa, whānau are important, forming us into who we are, but not usually as crucially important, affecting our psychic and spiritual well-being as there are in Māori spirituality. So heritage and genealogy, for example, are wonderful to learn about and maybe take inspiration from, but are not critical to our spiritual health and formation. Rather, our personal relationship with the divine is. When a Christian leader says, Christ is my tūranga waiwai, my place to stand, that leader has a Christ who is not grounded in or limited by, or has responsibilities with, a physical place or a physical extended family. Of course, Pākehā spirituality, like Māori spirituality, is evolving. And certainly in progressive thinking, the importance of whenua, how we are nurtured by and nurture for the environment. And Fano, where we learn about love, compassion and its costs are increasingly formative. Location also includes God. Though Christians talk of the Holy Spirit dwelling within, most Western Christian thinking has God primarily external to us. So prayers are directed outwards towards the deity. And similarly, while Christians talk of God and Jesus coming amongst us, the incarnation, most Christian thought seems to lo locate most of God beyond this planet, in heaven. God is other, out there, mystery of mysteries, transcendent. Māori's spirituality, on the other hand, is more imminent, seeing manifestations of the divine all around. So there are gods of the forest, the ocean, cultivation, etc. Life is lived within these manifestations. Everything one does is within the purview of the divine and integrated with the divine. Wayne Takawa points out that the Māori word for the overarching concept of God was named Io by the missionaries, whereas the actual word was Ā'io. Ā'io literally means peace to you. So this transcendent word for God, Ayo, locates God back into the quality of betweenness among the people. You may be aware of the Bible and schools debate that's been going on for some time. Progressives and others have been wary of the practice of Christian instruction in state schools, mindful of the anecdotes of teachers with missionary zeal presenting a conservative evangelical worldview to children. There's been a campaign and court proceedings to keep the teaching of religion out of our schools. 
I have not heard of one Māori church leader in favour of this campaign. Though a couple have expressed the view, not dissimilar to my own, that Bible and school should be replaced by the teaching of religious studies, led by teachers, not volunteers. For Māori spirituality does not see a divide between sacred and secular in the way that Pākehā spirituality does. Any meeting in Te Ao Māori, whether church or business, teaching, medical, knitting group, should begin by acknowledging the spiritual currents at work. So this is karakia, before and after. Some progressives struggle with this. I have barely scratched the surface here of what a bicultural spirituality might involve. I'd like to conclude with a bit of Christology. One of the ways of talking about Jesus in Te Reo is Rata Fokoruruho, which means sheltering Rata tree. This is a term which is commonly used to describe a wise chief who gives nurturing shelter. That is a very different Christology than taking Jesus out of the village putting a crown on his head and worshipping him as the new emperor god. In a sense, the journey of progressive theology is finding Jesus again in the village, where he had never left. Blessings to you.